All right, so grace and hope with us forever. That is what is bestowed upon us being great, like an A plus for someone else. Grace, gracefulness, you know? The better guy graced us with something. Grace, hope. And someday, we will live forever someday. People will love each other. It's Richie Repenter, JC13, work for the king. You already know me, maybe not, you'll see. Anyway, I talked about how the old prophets and the people of church nowadays go ahead, they wear their ties, they wear their soft clothes, and Jesus said, beware of these people, beware of these things, because you wanted to see a prophet, right? You want to see someone who spoke and worked for God and changed society? Behold, those ones who wear ties, they're the hypocrites, they're the ones in king's houses, they don't do, as we said, they're in nice clothes. This is a hard thing. Jesus came to bring a sword. That is that he was the Messiah of Israel. The Messiah of the whole world, which means anointed leader of God, king of God, basically. Now, I can also bring up people like Muhammad or Gandhi. Even the strange folk who have told you to decalcify your pineal gland and use a water pump. Because the old prophets, like Isaiah, had said things about how they poisoned the water. And behold, you don't see what's happening before you. Your water is poisoned. The war is being lost. You have to leave. And it was on us to be watchmen over the people. And if we didn't warn them, then our blood was on our own hands. We would have to die. But if we did warn them and they escaped, we saved them. And our blood is safe. And if we did warn them and they... Uh, didn't do as we said, our blood is safe, they die. So, I want to get a gauge on people's idea of church. You can go ahead and comment in it when I post this type of thing up. But, where I'm getting at it is, judgment does start at the church. People have a lot of bad misconception about it, because Jesus actually is with the church, and he's there telling us, this is hypocrite shit, I don't like it, look how boring and droll and dross this is. He's just like droning on. That's not the way I'd like it. And we all know it's wrong, yet we sit through it or we get up and leave. Some of us actually say something and try to change it. And behold, the uh, wicked leaders in their ties go ahead and try and throw us out or over talk us and gain control of their people. They try to because they, uh, you know, don't do what God says and they're not blessed. And they feel challenged because we have an authority being those who spoke for God, like Jesus did that day. And he just stood up and started speaking, this scripture is about me. I came to open the eyes and heal the sick, raise the dead, cure the deaf. So they loved him and then they hated him. Anyway, we look at the Mohammedans and they have a judgment in this too, because they say, which means only God deserves the glory. And at least they work for only God, right? It's written in the Old Testament to go work for only God. Jesus quoted it. Mohammedans kind of do it, even if they bring a fire and a sword, like Jesus came to bring, without knowing the scriptures. Kind of like these guys coming over to your house saying, hey, decalcify your pineal gland, the water filter. Yeah, yeah, it tastes like chlorine, right? It's gross. They're out there doing it, even if they don't know it's the law to do this type of stuff. So they're justified by it. I wanted to also talk about how the church has the judgment wrong with heaven and resurrection. Clearly, it's been known that heaven is above us. Heaven above. This I call space. It is. There is also a heaven within us, our heart and our mind. There are seven heavens, probably more. God said, if you want to know me, go into nature. So behold, God is not a human. A lot of people worship Jesus or Buddha, and these are the same people whose bloodlines have been passed down for a very long time, doing the same thing their families did, maybe a little bit more, most likely very worse. But behold, nature actually tries to produce as soon as possible. If men were to do this and be like God, we'd be somewhat like Genghis Khan. The first child is supposed to be holy. I know that written in our law. So, 
that he can be head over the inheritance and be taught in your way and lead the other people, the other members of the tribe or family or nation. You go Kangaskhan style. And this inheritance stuff actually causes many, many problems. A lot of people will kill or try and steal your right to an inheritance when someone starts to die in your family. And this is an issue that has always been occurring. It's happened in my life on both sides of the family where I've been cut out of zero inheritance and I just have to let them steal, you know, maybe bring it up in law someday. So I've been an orphan with like nothing, just working for God. How much harder would the judgment be upon you? Who have these chances and opportunities and don't do it? Far greater. Little, little is expected from me. Well, like put a lot of people to shame. So with the God who made nature, wants us to save nature, these biologists, whether they're religious or not, actually obey faithfully without even knowing the teaching that God said, go and name these things, hotelodons, all types of things. They name them all, so ferns, branch, they name everything. And this is one of God's first works. Also, they make useful gifts out of them because God tired of the full moon parties and the feastings and the prophet came out speaking the you have tired our god with these he no longer delights in these he wants useful gifts so the biologists and scientists people who are faithful on earth with the material world can be trusted with true treasure and they've gone for it to go ahead and start making things that are useful like hormonal therapies along with things that are also hormonal medicines or even you know tools that can be used in medicine, useful gifts that lead to medicine and everlasting life. Implantable synthetic hormones that can lead you to be healed, Tylenol for inf inflammation, all this. These people have been faithful on the earth to God's teaching. God who made the earth and heavens. And we have to go to heaven. This is that resurrection thing. We know the planet could be overpopulated, maybe not. It will die in a giant fiery burn when the clouds aren't out long enough or whatever happens. There's many ways the earth can just suddenly burn up in an implosion of fiery wrath. So there's no clouds for like five days and then the oxygen catches on fire and oxygen burns more and more and more. It can happen. It's actually projected to happen like that where the oxygen catches fire on the earth. We have to leave and go to heaven. So this heaven space above us and resurrection is actually like this. It's not some mystical thing where like I use my special powers sometimes and I cause changes in the environment. It, it's not so much like that, but it's, it's more of the sort the we go to heaven and get new elements from space that aren't here on earth. Right? And maybe one of these rocks in all likelihood stuff like that has been found where we have these cultures for genetically modifying plants and this culture for the plant or whatever injects its bacteria and agrobacterium is the name of it into the cells of damaged plants and changes its dna with certain works that are done with it it injects its own dna into it that's how they genetically modify things. So I went to school for this a little bit. I still study it. I like working for immortal life, like Jesus says to do. But if we find something of a new nature up there, greater elements, which we should, you know, some of the NASA guys are like, let's go get our holy space rocks from Mars. Like, you got to get water up there. We have to baptize with water into space with the spirit and be born of the spirit and water. We got to put our earth water into space so that we can live up there. This is what we gotta do, you guys. Let's do it. Let's forget the rocks. Forget the walk, rocks. Get water up there. And then draw back things like out of the rocks, these new elements or a frozen crystal from a comet someday that perhaps it just happens to have these elemental makeups that are capable of changing the molecular structure of dead matter.
that is you poured this water on someone and uh, resurrect matter. Maybe we had to do something to it. Maybe we just found it from heaven. But that's the hope, that we can work for this immortal life doing the works that are faithful to our God, which is basically science. It's making good gifts out of the material world and faithfulness, not being like the hypocrite preachers who wear ties. Because this type of stuff can get you killed. People get upset. You tell someone you're wrong and I'm better and this is the way and you guys have to change your ways and do this type of stuff or you're going to die. They get all freaked out because they have religious jargon in their head and they don't even do what they should do. So the Mohammedans have blessed you constantly. Say the Jesus guys blessed you constantly with our society, our works that we brought. The Jewish people blessed you. And like Jesus said, bless your enemies, love your enemies, bless those who curse you. If your enemy is hungry, feed them. That'll be like putting hot coals into their mouth. So it comes back to this. Heaven's like an Ivy League school, you know. Not everyone who gets good grades gets in. You got to get good grades to get in. It's really hard. Jesus says such a thing. You're not just going to wake up one day resurrected in heaven because you were a good person. No. That's not the way it works. One of us will resurrect you for being faithful to God's work. Just service using nature. You know, you take these, mix it with water. Start figuring out what happens in it. Start guessing. Make more experience. Mix it with battery acid. Who knows? Be careful. Be intelligent. <laughs> mix it with hormones or something. Figure it out. Do some math. I'm not going to tell you mine. I can't trust you with it. You don't have faithful works. So with blessing these people with all sorts of stuff like our societies and our loving teachings, all the churches all over the world, science, medicine, we're actually going to pour the justice of God on these people who have had the test curved because they didn't get the A plus and earn it on an AP test. Metaphorically, analogous, parabolically. The, they just got their grade rounded up and, you know, they didn't learn enough. They couldn't do it. They're looped in with us for whatever, hipty hop reason. And in the justice of God, he's going to pay it to them harder for getting something they did not deserve. So a lot of these believers don't even practice religion. Jesus didn't speak about religion except for with religious people. Sometimes with his own people. He opened his scriptures up to his disciples and all that and made sense of them. Though a lot of people lie in these things. We look at Isaac Asimov's books about their being.